Hello everyone, uh, my name is Lars Kyle and today we are going to be doing the custom uh, custom professionally strung, custom factory strung signature contract offense. Let's get it. So today in particular we are going to be using the signature magic mesh. I'm going to be doing this direct uh, from the standard mesh kit with all the strings in it. Uh, top string, sidewalls, bottom string, shoot, uh, bottom string, pound it, then shooting strings. First thing I'm going to do is I'm looking at the piece of mesh. The one the, the, you always start uh, on the same, like I always start my top string on the same side. Now this is a 10 nine diamond uh, piece of mesh. So it's 10 diamonds across, then 9, then 10, then 9. So I always start my top string on the side that has 10 diamonds. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that the rougher of the two sides when I'm doing this is facing me, facing my like facing my, my face and facing my chest. When I've got the head in my lap and on my stomach, the like you know so this is the front part of the head this is where the ball goes into this is the back part of the head i have the back part of the head out which is what the camera is looking at okay so i'm looking at the rough side of the mesh the rough side of the mesh is what is going to be making contact with the ball when it is sitting in the pocket i've got 10 diamonds here 10 the 10 diamond row is on top i'm going to fold over two rows like this Okay, so instead of being the 10 diamond, so the, instead of being the 10 diamond row that is highest up towards the top of the head, it is actually the nine diamond row. As you can see, I have a nine diamond row and a 10 diamond row folded over on one another. Okay, now I'm gonna fold the camera down so you can see from your point of view how I do this. Okay, so I still have my mesh. I've got folded over, as you can see, I've got folded over with two rows. I am going to shift the mesh so that it looks, that, so it, it's like one and a half rows are folded over. I'm gonna find the middle of these nine, like the middle diamond of these two nine diamond rows that are up top, even though it's still a little bit shifted. So I'm gonna go outside to in one, two, three, four, five. So that is the center. We are starting the top string from the center. So from this center bridge right here, I'm going to go out uh, two holes. As you can see, I'm a little bit folded over like this. So this is just, I like starting with the string in my right hand. I'm going to go under there. As you see, this is still the center right there. Uh, this is still the center piece right here. So I'm going over one bridge to the right over the center and then one like you know going over under over under to one bridge to the left again if you need uh, another refresher I will supply the other tutorial that I created on how to do my top string which has pictures as we go along so that's the way that it's going to start I'm going to keep doing that all the way through the mesh but we're only going to be going through four of the six top string holes as you can see in front of you here. So now that I've got that, I'm going to make sure that that string is centered on the mesh. Does not have to be tight right now. Now I've got two fingers uh, on the two aglets on the ends of the string. Oh, and so just so we, we know, this is obviously the back of the stick. This is the back of the scoop. If I go underneath, that is the front of the scoop. If I'm going back to front, it means I'm going this way. If I'm going front to back, it means I'm coming from the front of the head towards the back. On the sides, if I'm going outside in, this is the outside, and this area in the middle where the ball would sit is the inside. So if I'm going outside in, it looks like this. If I'm going inside out, it looks like that. Okay. So now we are doing the top string first. I am taking two at two, both hands at a time. I'm going from the front to back and the front to back through the uh, middle top string holes and by middle I mean so that the two that are closest to the si signature symbol right here if you go one from one side to the other if you count one two three four five six we're starting with holes three and four so I'm pulling through like this I'm using my pinkies to open up this whole 
nice and wide and then the two ends that I just pulled through those two holes I'm gonna go down and through to the outside like this now I can continue I can put those hold those a little bit together and I can pull that mesh and I can just go back and forth a little bit trying to make sure that that is nice and tight now the way that I make sure that this part of the string up here where the mesh that's going through the, the holes of mesh I want to make sure that is tight as possible right up to the plastic I'm gonna cross these real quick I'm gonna use my hands I'm gonna wrap all the way around I'm gonna pull as tight as I can so now I'm keeping everything much tighter the plastic now that's just gonna that's pretty much gonna stay where it is for right now and then I'm gonna finish for, for the first side I'm gonna do on the left it doesn't matter which side you do I'm gonna go back to front again creating a loop here with my thumb and forefinger or thumb and middle finger I reach through I pull the end of the string through that pull the end of the string through that loop and I'm wrapping it around and I'm trying to get that nice and tight I want this knot right here to sit nice and tight now just to finish up the uh, of these first two I make sure that that stays nice and tight where it is again I'm going back to front through the one two third top string hole I'm going to use my finger to click that tip through this loop that I've made I pull that tight I wrap my left hand around it and I make sure that this knot here stays nice and tight so now I am gone I have gone through the mesh I am not tying the mesh to the plastic I am tying the the knots to the string using just the string itself and the mesh is kind of floating there on the string now I'm gonna be going I'm gonna start with my right hand and going out towards here now I'm gonna so remember one two three four five six I'm gonna be putting the string through one three four and six I'm skipping two and holes number two and number five but notice I'm still a little bit I'm, I'm still folded over but I'm not quite perfect I'm, it's kind of one and a half rows are, are there so I want to make sure if I put my my finger through like you know if I put my mesh or my finger in between like you know I've got mesh on one side I've got mesh in the other other this is the outside part of the mesh and I'm folding it over and like back here these are you know there's the outside here and the outside here I want to make sure that I'm pulling the outside part of them the, the, the string is going is touching the outside parts of each of the folded parts of mesh so as you can see I've gone through that hole so I'm going to go through the next one here and I'm going to go around so the the string is going to be up against that back part right there so there's one so I went through one two versions of the hole and I'm going to do the same thing again one two I'm going to do the same thing on the opposite side you can play around with some of the order of what we're doing okay but I'm going to start I'm going to next one I'm going to do as I'm going through the plastic I've got the tip of my string got my aglet I'm going front to back through the first hole because we're always counting just for the sake of this video we're always going to count from the my right to your left across so I'm going front to back here I go through the loop I'm wrapping this is just how I end up doing it and I'm going to pull this part of the string to try and make sure that this all gets as tight as possible I'm pulling this part of the string towards the center I'm trying to keep that nice and tight as tight as I can it's not going to sit you know straight flush down with that hole it's going to be pulled a little bit towards the middle that is okay then I'm going to finish off this knot here with the, the top this part of the top string I'm going back to front here I use my finger I fold the tip through the loop that I just created I'm pulling that tight and again I'm still I'm pulling towards the middle to try and keep that as tight as possible now I've already gone through these bits of the holes over here so I've got the tip I'm going front to back through hole number six because remember one two three four five six I've got this loop I'm putting pulling the tip through that loop now I'm, with my right hand I'm pulling towards the middle so something that you'll see me do all throughout the head is I've, I'll pull this way but I'll also I'll pull back a little bit that makes sure that everything is sitting the way it is so I'll go I'll pull towards the middle I'll pull away and I'll pull back towards the middle just to make sure I've got everything sitting exactly where I want to the biggest reason why I start from the middle as you can see let me just walk through that so I've got it sitting there now there's some friction with that knot so I could kind of let that go but I don't want to do too much 
I want to keep it nice and tight. I'm going to finish this part of this holes knot right here, going back to front. Use my finger to pull to get the the tip coming up through that loop. I pull through here. I make sure that it's sitting nice and tight, and then I pull that again towards the middle. The biggest reason why I start in the middle and work my way out is because it is so much easier for everything to be symmetrical when you start from the middle and work your way out. Now, we are going to be finishing off our top string on both sides. So, as you can see, I've still got the, what it's still kind of folded over a little bit. I'm going to go one more front to back through the next consecutive little area hole right there. I'm going to pull that all the way through. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side with the next consecutive hole as I've, of the kind of half kind of shifted nine diamond top string that we're doing. So now, even though it's shifted, I'm basically going to correct the shift to go back to where we had two full, like just for these two outside holes right here. I'm correcting the shift so I have one row and two rows directly folded over one another. I'm going to go back through both of those. So it's two holes of mesh that I'm going through. Okay, that is what I'm going to do that on both sides. Obviously, I'm going to do tying one side at a time uh, than the other. And then I'm going to go outside or sorry, excuse me. So I've got that. I've gone through those two holes of mesh. I've got my tip using the very first hole, the highest up hole, the first hole in the side wall itself. I'm going inside out. Now, nothing is going to keep this from where from from pulling back in a second, but I just I want to use my right hand and I want to pull away. OK, so I want to create tension on this knot. This is very tight. Now, if I let that go, it goes back to being loose. But I want to make sure that I do that before I start wrapping around. Just tightened it, pulled it all the way to the outside on the other on the other side of the stick. Now, I'm going to loop through once and I'm going to loop through again. So I'm actually going to be going through this hole of the plastic with the tip three times. I've already gone through once. So I'm going to go through again. Notice I've got a little bit of slack here. I'm pulling that I'm pulling that tight. I go through the two holes of mesh again from back to front. I go inside out through that first hole of plastic in the sidewall. That's kind of rectangular. Now I'm pulling that tight. Now I'm pulling those two holes. I'm pulling those two holes very snug up against the plastic itself. And now I'm keeping, I'm not going to let this go because otherwise it'll just start to loosen up again. So I keep it nice and snug there holding on to it. I use my other hand. This is why I like using two hands. I'm going to go back to front through those same two holes again. This is the last time I do that and going inside out through that same hole in the plastic. Now as long as I just keep enough tension the whole thing is not going to get loose. But right now you see that one of part one part of the string is a lot looser than the other. So I'm wrapping my hand, my fingers around it and I'm pulling everything nice and tight like this. So those two look the same. They should be of the same level of tension, and these should be very, very tight. Now, this is super important. I usually keep, that's a little bit closer than I would like. I usually keep my, my forefinger, or my, my index finger, and my thumbnail. I usually keep the, the nails on both of those a little bit longer than the rest because I use them a lot very specifically for stringing. So I'm keeping the tension here on this string. So I'm holding, I'm going to use my, in this case, the on, uh, on, it's the right side for me, it's the left for you. I'm using my left hand to keep tension in this string. I'm gonna use my right hand to keep the tip and I'm gonna wrap the tip around this string twice. And this is how we are gonna finish off our knot. Now, I'm not just gonna pull it. This is a special way that I have just uh, figured out how to do this. So, so I keep. I wanna keep that knot as close to the hole of the plastic as possible so that nothing loosens up. So I'm keeping my right, th my left thumb and my left index finger as close as possible. And notice I'm going to put using my left index fingers nail and I'm putting pressure on the string that I was just holding, the string that's coming out of the plastic, not these loops. The loops right now are kind of loose. I'm going to put pressure on that string that's coming out of the plastic and I'm just going to slowly pull. As you notice, I'm pulling on the tip with my right hand and I'm pulling it away from the head and everything is going to kind of move but it gets everything nice and tight so that knot sits very tight up against the plastic right there. 
okay so seeing just watching or you know seeing how do you send me do this on the other side so i've already gone through the two holes of the mesh through the plastic the holes in the plastic once i'm going back to front through those holes of mesh i'm keeping tension in the string coming from the middle <coughs> i go inside uh out through that hole right there. I make sure everything is <clears throat> everything is sitting nice and correctly. I keep tension in that string. I go back to front through those same two holes of mesh again. I go inside out for the last time through the plastic. Now it's, it's not loose yet. I wrap my fingers around it. I keep it nice and tight. That should look very nice and tight. If you, you know, it should feel extremely tight. There should be no movement in those two pieces of string. So because I'm a righty, even though regardless of the side of the head, I'm usually tying things off in the same way. So notice I'm still pulling on the string that's coming out of the plastic itself, positioning my, my thumb and my index finger as close as I can, putting pressure with the nail on my index finger. And I'm just pulling out in a way with just making sure that's close. And once I'm getting it, it's almost nice and tight, then I can kind of use my thumb and uh, index finger on my left hand to try and pull that knot as close as possible to the plastic. So even if I'm pulling away like this, you're using my left hand, I'm, you're holding onto the head and I'm pulling the mesh away from that, like this, these two, pe these two loops should not loosen up very much at all. Okay, so moving on. I'm taking a new piece of string. This is going to be for the sidewall itself. Okay, so this is, whoop, should have started that over. Started. So this is how the same knot that I just created right there, I am going to be, you know, creating it. I want to try and I'm basically wrapping the tip around the string once through the loop so it's around twice. I want to get the the knot to be two inches about two inches away from the tip of the string because we want to be able to read signature on the tips of the string that is very important so in the same in a very similar manner to how we just tied off the the ends of our top string is how we're going to start the beginning of our uh, sidewall. So I'm going to go outside in through the plastic and I'm going to go front to back through those two holes of mesh. So I tied, as you can see here, I, I tied off the top strings on what ended up as the nine diamond row and I'm starting the sidewall on the ten diamond row. So I'm going outside in through the plastic. I'm going front this is being the front of the, you know, this is the back part of the head, front to back through those two loops of mesh. I'm gonna pull that all the way through. Now, for the aesthetic purpose, I wanna make sure, I'm gonna go through this whole uh, plastic two more times, but I wanna make sure I'm going, each time I go in, I go further as, it's, I'm going through the same hole, but I'm going down closer to the bottom of the head. I don't wanna be coming in above the knot. I wanna be going in below the knot so it looks good. So I've gone outside in and front to back through those two holes. I'm making sure I'm pulling this way, as you can just see that that, night, that knot tightened up a little bit. I'm keeping tension here. I'm pulling that on from the end of the string. So you can see I've got, it's kind of tight right there. I wanna make sure I can, it's it's loose enough so that I can get the string through, the tip through the hole of plastic again one more time. So notice I'm going down, I'm same hole, but like below, this is being the bottom, this being the top, below the where I've already put the string in, I'm going outside in through the plastic. And then front to back through those two holes. So now I've got this loop right here. I'm gonna use that loop to tighten everything above it, like from the knot, you know, from here all the way up to that knot. And I'm gonna use the tip here. So notice if I just pull it just barely tight enough, one looks a lot tighter than the other. I just get it to there. I'll wrap my left hand around the string. I pull towards the middle. So those two loops look exactly the same. Okay, so as we go down, from the top down towards the bottom of the head, I am gonna be counting the number of holes that you are going to skip. And then I'm gonna be talking about what knots and what string and mesh interactions we will, be go we will be going through as we get there. So I am going to be skipping the next two holes, which means, so I haven't gone, I haven't gone through the plastic, I haven't gone through the mesh yet at all. 
I am going to skip this first hole. I'm going to skip this second hole. So there's going to be two vacant holes. I'm going using the tip. I'm going outside in. I'm going front to back. Notice I've got this large loop here. I've got this loop. I'm going to use my fingers. I'm going to open. I'm like I'm, I'm making. I'm going the loop here to what looks kind of like a figure eight. And I'm using my thumb and my index finger. And I'm going to reach through. I'm going to grab the string. I'm pulling it like this. This is going to be what we are called. This is called a knotted interlock, meaning that I am making. I'm pulling this piece of mesh to that hole that I just went through and it's going to be pulled there and staying there. So before I start making the knot itself tight, I am using, I'm grabbing onto the string that's coming from the top down. I'm going through the hole. I want to make sure everything is pulled downward as tight as possible. So I'm keeping tension on this part right here and then I'm going to fold kind of towards the outside. So I'm pulling that piece of mesh to the plastic itself. I continue to hold on to that using my right hand to pull on the end of the string. And I'm pulling, this is going to be pulling that knot tight. Notice I'm wrapping around with my hand here. There's a little bit of this, I mean, there's tension in all of this string, but it's a little bit loose. And I'm going to be pulling down like that because that's the direction that the string is going. So that knot is, stays very tight. This area from the knot north, this part right here is extremely tight. I'm going to skip the next two holes and I'm going to do, then I'm going to do the exact same thing. So skip, skip. So I'll go one, two, three. So I'm skipping two holes. I'm going to go outside in through that hole. I'm going front to back through the next hole in the mesh. So I'm, 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 I've got this big loop right here. Remember, I fold that loop over so there's a, an eight, like a figure eight. I'm using my thumb and my index finger to pull that string through that hole. Again, I'm using my left hand to pull, make sure that from the where I just tied my last knot out is tight. I pull, I you know, use my index finger and my thumb on my left hand to make sure that the, the that piece of mesh is pulled is sitting right up against the plastic. Notice this is all nice and tight. I'm wrapping around. I pull nice and pull down. Two knots, extremely tight. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same type of knot, but I'm skipping three holes this time. So it's one, two, three, four. Three open holes. I'm going outside in through the, the, the fourth hole down from the last knot that I did, front to back. Same thing here, I've got that open. I kind of roll it over. I'm pulling that string through that loop. Using my left hand to make sure I'm pulling everything nice and tight. I pull that, that piece of mesh over right up to the plastic so it's gonna sit right there. I'm using my right hand to make sure that there's tension here and I pull down this way. Super tight, super tight, super tight. So I am gonna skip two more holes and now we're gonna start I'm going to change. We're not doing these knots. I'm not doing a knotted interlock anymore. I am just going to do what is effectively called a one. We're going to do ones the rest of the way down. So I'm going to skip two holes. So one, two, skip. I'm going through the third, the next, the third hole down from where we just did. Okay, but I've got this loop here. I'm not going through the mesh just yet. I've got this loop that I'm creating like that. I'm open, using my left hand to keep that nice and open. I'm using my left hand to pull this loop through, and I'm going to pull that nice and tight. Notice I grabbed onto the I grabbed onto the string with my right hand. However you want to do it, this is I just wrap. I like I wrap it around my index finger, and then I you know make a fist. So I'm pulling. I pull a little bit up to make sure that this there's there's some tension here and then I pull down because I want to make sure that the string sits properly now before I, I'm going to redo this in a second but I want you all to see I don't want the string I don't want this interaction to sit all the way like I don't want it to sit all the way to the inside so this would be the inside of the the piece of plastic where the the tip is touching right in here I want it to lay, there's a nice little flat groove on the back of the head. That's where I want this string interaction to lay. If I wanted to pull it way down here to the outside, so if I was pulling towards the front of the head, okay, the string, where the string crosses itself could be way over to the out to the, the outside of the sidewall, you know, this the side part of the sidewall. I don't want that. That's gonna pull the mesh too far to the outside. 
So I'm going to loosen this up a little bit. And again, I am just, so there's, it, this is, it's very loose right now. I wrap around with my right hand. I kind of bring it right down. I pull it up a little bit. Then I pull it down and I'm actually kind of using my hand to pull a little bit. So there's, it's, there's tension. This is tight. When this, when I pound this stick, I don't want this thing to hold all these, all, all these areas where the string interacts to get loose, but I want that to sit right there on that little flat part of the back of this on the back of the plastic on the sidewall okay so now for the rest of the way down the mesh every time i'm using the tip of the string to go through the next consecutive hole in the mesh i'm going from the back of the mesh to the front so here we are i already got that set up now that's it's going to stay tight enough for what i for what i read and uh, for what i need right now i'm going to use the tip i'm going back to front through the next hole in the mesh i'm pulling that all the way through and i'm pulling that tight down like i had just done when i wanted the the the, like where I wanted to make sure that the, the string was sitting in the right spot. When I pull it down like this, this is going to make sure that it's pulling that mesh. That mesh should be laying on this little flat group. That's where I want the mesh to lay. All right, so now I'm not going to be skipping many as many holes. So now instead of skipping two, which I did two or three, which I did up here near the top, I'm skipping one hole. So I'm going to go. So there's I went through this one. One, two. I'm going two holes one, two holes down. The next one, remember, I'm going outside in here through pulling backwards through this loop. I'm going to grab like that and pulling, pulling up, pulling down just so it's going to sit right where I want it to sit. I'm going back to front through the mesh, making sure that the, me the, the mesh is sitting in the right spot. I'm going to skip the next hole. So one, two, I'm skipping the next hole, I'm going two holes down from where I just did getting it nice and tight, pulling up towards the top straight, pulling down towards the bottom, going pulling north, pulling south. I'm not going east, west or so much right there. I'm going to go back to front through the next hole of mesh. Now, I'm not going to skip any holes for the next one. I'm going to go just through the next hole outside in through the plastic, pulling up through that loop, getting rid of the, uh, getting rid of the looseness, pulling north, Pulling south, if I have to go up and down again, just to make sure that I'm keeping everything sitting in the right spot, I go back to front through the next hole of mesh. Now I'm going to skip again. So there's not through the next one. I'm not going to go through number one. I'm going through number one, number two. I'm skipping one hole, outside in, pull through the loop, pull north, pull south, make sure that's sitting in the right spot, back to front through the next hole in the mesh. Now notice I've only got four holes left here. So I'm gonna skip one hole. I'm gonna to go to two. So I'm not one, I'm going through two outside in. Get, getting rid of the tension here or like you know, getting everything tight. I pull north, I pull south. Remember I said I don't you don't want it pulling to the inside, you don't want it stretching, you know, being pulled all the way to the outside. I'm gonna go through this is the last time I'm going through any hole of the mesh. I'm going front or sorry back to front as I've done for all of the second half of this head here and I'm now I'm going to change it up I'm about to finish up and tie off or all about just about to tie off the bottom of the sidewall I'm going to go to the tip so the of all these holes in the sidewall I'm going to go inside of the head out through the bottom hole there it is so I'm, I'm using my left hand to hold on to the mesh. I'm going to pull outwards and kind of you can go up or down a little bit. doesn't really matter where you go, but I'm going to get that nice and tight. I want to keep that tight. This is one of the most important strings to keep everything nice and tight and to keep tension in this. So I'm grabbing it on with my left hand. Unlike how I, I started, I ended my top string and I started my sidewall, I'm only going to go, I'm going to only wrap the tip around this piece of string one time. So I'm going through... Uh, through that hole, uh, that big loop, pulling it through once. Now I'm, you know, I'm keeping tension. I'm using my thumb and my index finger on my left hand in this case to create that uh, pressure against the string. And I'm going to use my right hand with the, the loose end of the string. I'm pulling that nice and tight, but I'm using the nail on my index finger to keep that knot right where I want it, right flush up against the plastic so if i'm here notice if i'm if i'm wrapping on here and i'm kind of yanking you won't see that net that that knot stays pretty darn close if i pull if i pull super hard right now i can get it to go about a millimeter away from the plastic 
Okay, but if I kind of just pull on the mesh a little bit, that knot is sitting snug up against the plastic. That is what we want. So now that I've done one side, remember I'm going to go through, I'm going to wrap that the tip through the loop twice. I want to make sure that that knot is just about two inches away from the end of the string so we can read the signature. Oh, hopefully you can see this when you redo it. The signature on the aglet right there. So now I am going to go a little bit faster down this, still talking through what I'm doing, but just not stopping to explain so much. So taking the tip outside in, front to back, outside in, front to back, outside in for the last time. I can keep that nice and loose. That's fine for right now. And then front to back for the last time. So I've gone through that hole of plastic and those two holes of mesh twice. So even though I've got two loops right now, I just use, I'm getting here, I'm pulling that knot as tight as I can up against the plastic itself. On the lower of the two loops, I pull that nice and tight. And I'm just using my right hand here to make sure that everything lays down the way that I want it to, pulling away from the outside part of this loop. I'm gonna wrap around. Again, I want that to sit nice and tight. Okay, so I'm skipping two holes, outside in, front to back. I've got that loop there. I fold over to the figure eight. I pull through that loop. I pull down from the bottom. I pull the mesh all the way over to the plastic. I keep that nice and tight. I'm using my right hand here to keep tension in the string. I'm pressing on the string and on the mesh at the same time so that everything from here, from where my fingers are up like this, very tight. I'm using my left hand to slowly pull through. Remember, I'm keeping like everything is nice and tight here. And so even though there's that loop, this is what I was talking about before. I kind of pull north and then I pull south and that knot is extremely tight. And that straight, that like, you know, from where I started the, the sidewall to this knot, extremely tight. So I'm going to do that as we did before. I'm going to do that two more times. So I'm skipping two more holes. One, two, I'm going to one, two, three, outside in, front to back. I have that loop. I fold that loop over. I pull the tip through, pulling down. Everything is nice and tight, pulling the mesh up to the plastic. Pulling here, so if like that's there's that nice big loop. I like actually pulling down better with my right hand. That knot is extreme, that knotted interlock is extremely tight. Now I'm gonna skip, I believe, three holes. I'm gonna skip one, two, three. So I'm going one, two, three, four. Outside in through the plastic, front to back through that hole of mesh. I have the loop, I roll it over, I pull the tip through that loop, keep that nice and tight. Now I skip two more holes, one, two, I go one, two, three. But remember, I'm not tying any more knots. The rest is ones all the way down. So I've got this loop here, I've got my index finger and my thumb through the loop. I went outside in, I'm going to pull that mesh through, pull that string through the loop. I mean, it's, it's kind of tight. Remember, I want to make that, that, that string interaction sit right on that little flat part. So I'm going to pull up, pull north, pull south, the top of the head being north, the, the throat of the head being south, with where the shaft is. Remember, I'm going back to front through that next hole of mesh. Uh, I'm skipping one hole, so not that one. I skip, I go one, two. I go outside in through the loop that is created. So this first one is very important. The, the or again, I should say, the, the next one, like the first one I've gone through here, what I'm doing right now is making sure, I'm keeping everything tight, but I also wanna make sure that this hole uh, of mesh is sitting where I want it to. It's pressing on that little thin flat part right there. So where I pull north, I pull south, I let that go back to front through that next hole of mesh with the tip. I'm skipping one more hole here, so not one, I'm going to two. Outside in through the plastic, I'm going to pull it through that loop. I'm kind of using my right hand in this case to make sure that the mesh is being is pulling a little bit because I want to make the, sure the mesh is sitting in the right spot every time. So I pull north, south, I go north, south once or twice there. Next one, next hole down with the tip, I'm going back, 
back of the mesh to the front not skipping anyone i'm going through the next uh, adjacent hole of the plastic outside in through the loop using my right hand to make sure that the mesh is pulled out so that I can go north, south, north, south, make sure that everything is nice and tight, make sure the mesh is sitting against the plastic where I want it to, going back to front through that next hole of mesh, skipping one hole in the plastic, so not one, but going through two in this case, pulling it through the loop, using my right hand to pull the mesh out a little bit here, north, south, north, south. See, when I do this sometimes, it kind of affects everything. I want to keep making sure that I'm, I'm pulling up north and then tying down south so that all of these uh all of the string that's going through all of these holes here looks very obviously looks the same from side to side but looks similar aesthetically as i'm going down the head i'm gonna go back to front through the next hole of mesh i've only got four holes left in the sidewall like i did on the other side so i'm gonna skip this next one and go through two pulling the tip of the string through that loop. Again, I'm still just holding onto the mesh here. I do this a little bit, I'm moving around. Notice like, because up here, I tied the nut, tied the mesh to the plastic. So this time I'm not tying the mesh to the plastic. So then this, th this mesh will move a little bit. I wanna do this, cause I wanna make sure that the mesh is still sitting in that same spot. So I've, there's a little bit too much looseness here. I pull north, I pull down south. Everything is nice and tight again, I go, back to front through the very last hole of mesh. And this is again how I'm gonna finish off this. So there's two more holes in the sidewall. I'm going using the tip, I'm going inside out through the very bottom hole of the sidewall. Now again, I'm pull, using my right hand to pull that. There's a little bit looseness, looseness there, but I'm pulling down, making sure that that is nice and tight. I'm holding on to the, I'm keeping tension right there with my left uh, thumb and index finger. I wrap around once through that loop. Use my left index finger uh, to press down on the string here to keep everything nice and tight. I'm pulling, I'm keeping everything there. And once I get down there to the bottom, I can pull out with my right hand. I can use my, my thumbnail and try to push that knot down nice to the plastic. So I'm pulling, I'm not pulling too hard here, but if I just yank, 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 that knot stays nice and snug right up to the plastic throughout the entire thing. So there we go. We are, we're, we're, we're on our way right now. So as you can see, we have a nice top string. We have a nice channel. Uh, that channel is going to get pounded out, so it's not going to look quite as aggressive uh, in a little bit. But moving on. So I'm taking another piece, uh, which is a their typical sidewall length piece of string. I'm going to tie a double knot on one side, about two inches. So that I, just like I did for the tops of the sidewall, so you can see the aglet that says signature. I'm gonna pull that, make sure that that knot is nice and tight. So now, if we look down here at the bottom, I'm gonna try to get this out of the way so you can see it. There are five holes that make up where the, what we can use for the bottom string. We are only gonna be going through two of them and each of those two holes that we go through, we go through one time. So in this case, the top is up, you know, the, this, the, the part, part of the plastic that's close to the top string and the bottom or coming, you know, coming from under is underneath that's closer to the shaft. So if I'm going from one side to the other, I count one, two, three, four, five. Uh, I am going only through holes number two and number four. So I have that sidewall string that I just tied the knot in one end. I'm pulling over. I've got the tip. I'm going from down to up. I'm going up through the bottom of hole number two. Okay, once I do that, I'm pulling that hole, that string all the way through so that knot is right up against the bottom of the plastic. And now, as we had talked to ab about before, we've got rows of diamonds that are nine diamonds across and rows that are 10 diamonds across. I am gonna be going in, out, in, out, in, out through the, the, the last 10 diamond row that I went, that I tied the, off the sidewall with. So if you see right here, so this hole that I'm trying to stick my left index finger through, that hole, I went through that hole of mesh 
That was the last hole of mesh that I went through before I tied off the sidewall. I'm not going to go through that hole, but that is the row that I want to stay with throughout here. So I'm going to go, remember, this is the back part of the mesh, this is the front. I'm going front to back. So if I'm going to go left to right, in this case, so it's uh, this is my right side, but it's your left. So left to right, this is hole number one. I'm going to be using holes number two through eight in uh, going front to back and back to front uh, consecutively through each hole. So the hole number one is what I went through the sidewall with. So hole number two, I've got the tip right here. I'm going to go front to back, pull it all the way through. Then I'm going to go through hole number three back to front. I'm going from hole to hole to hole from one side from your left over to your right. So now I'm going back to front, pulling it all the way through. The next hole, which is hole number four, what I'm putting my left index finger through, I'm going front to back. Now, you do not have to go one and then pull it all the way through, and then the next one, and then pull it all the way through. As you will see, I will quickly go in and out and in and out. So back to front, front to back through the next two holes, back to front, front to back through the next two holes, and then I only have one more hole to go through because that's hole number seven, or sorry, that's hole number eight. This is hole number nine. Oh, excuse me. I made a huge mistake before. So I was going two through nine. 1 and 10. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So I'm going 2 through 9. I only go through 8 holes of mesh. I'm going to finish off the last time I go through a hole. It's hole number 9 on that last row, 10 diamond row across where I ended my sidewalls. I'm going to go back to front through that number hole number 9. I pull that all the way through. Now I'm going to go top down through the, if I'm starting from your your left going to the, the right, one, two, three, four, five. I went up through number two. I'm going down through number four. Now I'm using like, my fingers are pretty thick. So I'm just going to hold my, my finger right there and I'm pulling it so that it's like, I'm not trying to cut off the circulation, but uh, this is just how it works out for me. You can figure out what works best for you, whether it be, you know, kind of your index finger here, if you want to use your thumb, whatever's best, but this is just a, a good rule of thumb to start by. Whereas I just, I'm, I'm pulling the, using my left hand to pull like the, the bottom, the open ended, uh, long part of the bottom string. I want to keep that just about tight enough so that I'm not cutting any circulation off and I can put my th my finger in and out of that hole, but that's just about how loose that I want to keep that hole. I want to just, I am eyeballing this right now. I'm going to make one loop. So I tied, a, a, I tied uh, the string twice, like two loops, twice through that loop of the first one. I'm only going to do it once on the other side so that if there needs to be adjustments made, it's, there's one side is a little bit easier to untie than the other. So I wrap around, creating the loop, pulling that through. And I'm using, I'm not using my nail in this case because I'm not trying to keep this, I'm not, there's not a lot of tension here. This is kind of loose. But I'm going to pull down with my right hand here, and I use my left index finger and thumb to kind of pull against with that. I'm pulling the knot up towards the plastic, and then I can also put my finger through that loop here and pull up a little bit just to make sure that I'm pulling, I'm using the, the plastic itself to help me keep that knot nice and tight. So, for this, this looks a little... Uh, this looks a little tight. The pocket is a little small. Ball, even if you if you put a ball in this, you could definitely throw it. You could definitely throw with it. It would uh, it would definitely work. But the reason why we're here and the reason why we're doing this, or what we're about to do, is understanding that you can break in ahead. There's a difference between getting used to a head and breaking in a head. The next thing that we're gonna do. Is we're going to use a baseball bat. This is what I use. So I'm changing the angle so you get a little bit better. Whatever you end up using, the purpose of the baseball bat or the purpose of the, the ball on the top of a banister or a staircase or whatever it might be, 
purpose of this is to make sure that I'm stretching out every single hole of hole of mesh by pounding on this pocket. So notice I haven't cut anything. We're leaving everything nice and long. That's totally fine. I have screwed this hole that this uh, this head into this shaft. It just makes it easier so you don't have to ever worry about anything coming off. Okay, so now this by keeping it on the shaft to pound, it gives me a lot more leverage and a lot more control over what I'm doing. I have never broken a head, broken mesh, or broken these strings in pounding a pocket, and I want to pound the hell out of it. You want to make sure, as you can kind of tell, I have worn off all of the black paint down to the actual wood itself. It's kind of shiny because I do this, I've been doing this for years with this one bat, but I'm going to start with my, my pocket here. I want to stretch every single hole all the way out. So the first thing I do as I use, in this case, I've got my left hand up against the, the, the back of the scoop and I've got my right hand is grabbing around the throat and I'm going to push, I'm using my upper body to push down and I'm going north, south with the bat all the way down from the, the throat all the way up to the plastic. I go like that, okay, I'll hold, I'll use my knees to hold on to the bat and I'll bang down with the bat in the same manner that you would if you were catching the ball. Notice the pocket looks a lot deeper. Okay, it should still be legal. And if it's not, oh, see, I look right here, I can just tell. There's too much, this is too loose. This bottom string, after pounding a little bit, looks a little bit too loose, and I'm not done pounding yet. But I am gonna go back, and I'm gonna untie that single knot. So I'm gonna make this even smaller. I wanna pull that just so it's like just a little bit, just like just the tip of my, my index finger is where I want, is how big I want that loop to be. So it's definitely, I've, I've effectively made that loop right there for the bottom string. I've cut it at least in half, if not even more. Notice that depth is not nearly as bad. So I can still go north, south, north, south, but I also, in this case, I wanna make sure I'm using the bat to get these top corners. Every part of the mesh wants to get stretched out. It needs to be done, it's going to happen. If the, if it's, if the head is being used, it's going to get stretched out. But if you've got shooters that are pulled super, you, you, get, you put the shooters through before you pound, then that mesh is, it's a lot harder for that mesh to get stretched out and it might be good initially, but once everything kind of loosens up because you didn't do all the, you didn't stretch out all the mesh because you put shooters in first, then you're gonna have problems. We want the pocket to do the work and shooters to just be a little bit of extra help. So I'm gonna use that top corner. I'm just basically, I'm pressing, using my two hands wrapping around the corners. I'm pressing down from underneath the plastic towards the, the middle of the pocket. I want to make sure I do this for all the corners, the, the top two corners. I want to get every single piece of mesh stretched out. So we've got a good looking pocket. That's how long it takes. It does not take long at all to stretch out that, to stretch out the pocket with the baseball bat. Almost done here, guys. Okay, I should have one more sidewall, you know, sidewall string. I'm going to be using this for a nylon. So now it only looks like one hole. If you look up up here underneath, after I've stretched everything out, underneath the top string itself, even though I've began with two rows folded over, once you pull everything down, it looks like there's only one row of mesh that is folded over. But if I count down from the top, row by row by row by row, that is how I'm going to determine exactly where I put my shooters in. So I'm going to count one row that goes all the way across, two rows, three rows. We're counting down from the top, so on horizontal rows, so we've got one horizontal row, two rows, three rows. The third row down from the scoop is what I want to go through. I'm going to take one tip. Um, you know, if you count down from the top, there's first sidewall hole, second sidewall hole, third one. The third one is still a, a rectangular hole. I'm going outside in through that plastic, coming out underneath uh, or towards the front of the head, not going through any pieces of head mesh yet. 
I'm going to take left, uh, so the tips in each of my two fingers, I'm pulling it all the way out so it's nice and it's even. Now on that third row of mesh, it's also the same hole, the third row down of the mesh if you count down from the middle, it's also the same holes of mesh that I started my sidewall in. So notice I'm going to be holding on with my pinky and my palm and my, my index finger and my thumb on both hands. So through this first hole of mesh that I started my sidewall with, I'm going to go left hand first from the front to back through that hole, keeping it towards the keeping that string towards the bottom of the hole, bottom as in closest to the throat of the stick. And then I've got my uh, my right hand, and I'm going to go back to front through that same hole. Now. I'm still holding on with my, I can let go with my index finger and my thumb, but I'm still holding on with my pinky and my palm. So then with this is where I started, and then I put those through the way that I wanted, and so now I'm going to use my index finger and thumb on both hands to grab the opposite string that I was just holding on to, and then I pull through. I'm going to match up, see right here they're not close, I'm still close enough to the end that I can kind of make the adjustments and make sure that everything is nice and loose. I can pull, I can sit here, I can pull back on the on the middle of the string and then pull back on the middle of the string here with my right hand just so that there's some looseness to it. And I've got both tips in my left hand and I pull it out so that they're nice and even. Now, this is not the only way to do nylons or, or shooters. This is just the way that I do it. The most important thing is it always it looks the same from head, from this head to the heads that you're doing for, for the first one, the tenth, the hundredth, the thousandth. It's all got to look the same. So this is just the way that I have found that works. I like doing this because I've got two hands going rather than just one. Uh, so I'm going to go do the same thing. I'm going to go first with my left hand. I'm going to go keep that through the the lower part of the hole. My right hand is I'm going to put the, my string through the from my left hand goes front to back. My right hand goes back to front. Okay, I've got both hands right there. I'm switching what I'm what I'm grabbing onto with both my hands, and I pull it through. I make sure that I'm pretty close like this, and I'm going to work my way all the way across. I notice how it's like it, I get into a little bit of a rhythm here, and it's pretty quick. Okay, one thing I want you to remember is hurry, but don't rush. Make sure this is right. We're sitting here right now. I was asked to do this because we wanted to make sure that we've got a pocket that's awesome, that will stand the test of time, that anybody can pick up and use, and is going to perform time and time again. Okay, so I'm going to do. I'm going all the way across. This is a. a, a I'm going through a ten diamond row. So I've gone through holes number nine. The last one is number ten. I pull it all the way out like that. So now this the, the piece of string that is coming towards the front, that is going inside out through that third sidewall hole down. One, two, three, that third sidewall hole down. It's going inside out through that hole. And I'm just going to let that stand there. I mean, and just notice, if I pull it as tight as I possibly can, you can see, you can see how much that string, if I'm pulling it super tight, how much it affects the shape right there. I don't want it to be tight, okay? I don't want it to be as loose. I don't want string poking out like that, okay? But And I don't want it to be super loose, but you don't have to tie that one off just yet. Next, I've got my two shooting strings. I'm gonna put wrap one. I just like usually, I wrap one around my neck like that so it's easy to grab. I use my hand to kind of float the pocket out a little bit here. Now I'm going to be using the tip of the sidewall string or the, the shooting string, the shooting lace. I'm going to be going outside in through the same exact hole that I just went through, which is the one, two, third hole down in the sidewall on this side of the stick. I prefer just if this is how I've always done it. It could, if you start on the opposite side and go in the other direction, that is okay. What matters is that it's all you're always doing it in the same way. This is the way that I do it. 
So I'm going to go with the next, you know, starting at the scoop and going down. I did one, two. I just did the nylon in the third row down. I'm going to do the, the shooting lace in the fourth row down. That is nine holes across. The number of holes that go across in this case do not matter because, again, we've got two uh, tips of the string that are going in and out every single time. So in the same fashion, I'm pulling that string through. I'm grabbing both tips. I'm pulling them out. I'm making sure that they are the same distance away from there. So the, the middle part of this shooting lace is right going through that hole. And I'm going to do the same thing as I did before. I use my left hand. I go front to back through that first hole going from one side to the other. And I use my right hand. I go back to front through that same hole. So I've got two tips of the string going through the same hole. I switch hands that I'm holding on to. I pull out. I measure to make sure that I'm nice and close. And then I'm just going to continue to go through all the way across. We're not worrying about tensioning anything just yet. So I go all the way nine, through nine holes there. And again, I'm going to end. So I only have gone through nine holes from one side to the other. I'm going to end using the tip here, going from the inside of the, you know, the inside of the head like this. I'm going through from the inside out through that same hole that I just went through for the nylon. So if you see right there and right here, the nylon and the shooting lace are going through the exact same hole. I still haven't tied anything off. We're going to tension everything out at the very end. For the last shooting lace, we're almost done. So I'm going to go, I've, I've gone through, I did the nylon in one, two, the third row down. I did the next shooting lace in the fourth row down. I'm going to skip a row, five, and through six. So I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five, six. That's the row that I'm going to put my last shooting lace through. I'm going to do the similar thing that I did here. I'm going to go outside in through the hole, the next hole going down after the first knot in the sidewall. So this is the first knotted interlock here. I'm through the next hole going down, just going south. I'm going to go use the tip of this shooting lace. I'm going outside in through that hole. Should not be difficult to get that through there. I'm going to make sure that those are even, that the shooting lace's center is right there when it's going through that hole. And I'm going to do the same thing. Left, you know, the, the, the tip of the shooting lace in my left hand. This is another nine diamond row because we skipped the ten. I go back uh, front to back through that hole. And with my right hand, I go back to front through the same. I switch which tips that I'm grabbing onto. I pull it all the way through. And I'm going to repeat and go all the way across. Make sure that nothing is in the way. You're not pulling anything through the wrong stuff. Going through the very last hole. Left goes through. Right goes through. Switch. Pull. And I'm going to use. So I've got my left hand again. I'm going to go inside out through the same hole on the opposite side. So this is when this is the front part of the pocket where the ball comes into. I'm going inside out. So there's the hole that the string. Oh, you can't even see that. So there's the hole. This is the hole that the first the string is going through. I'm going to go the next one down. Going inside out. As you can see, coming out one hole south of that first knotted interlock. I kind of pull that all the way through. So in this case, now we're almost done. We're just about to tie off the shooting strings. Got a nice looking pocket that can kind of sit a little bit low. You can cradle it right up there in the middle. So I want to be able to use the back part of my hand. I'm going to put, I'm pushing with not too much force. I'm not pushing it too, too hard. Okay, but I'm just pu pushing the back part of my fingers through here. And I'm just going to, I want to be running the back of my hand, the back of my fingers from the where the ball wants to sit in the middle of the pocket over those two shooters, over the nylon, and then out. I want this to be a gradual progression. Okay, I don't want any one of these strings to be significantly... I don't want any one of these three shooting strings, the nylon or the two shooting laces, to be any tighter than any of the other ones. So once I get to that point where it's not, it's there, there should be an aesthetic level of pleasing here. 
once I get all of this done and I feel like we're in a good place, I'm gonna make sure that my laces are out of the way and pulled south. Notice I'm not, I've got, I've got my nylon over here right now. My nylon is not perfectly lined up. That's fine, that's totally okay. And at, at, at a later point, these are gonna get cut off. But again, I'm, I'm pulling just enough tension to keep these kind of straight, but I'm going to use a similar knot that I finished my sidewalls and I finished my, my bottom string with. <laughs> I'm grabbing both of them with my left index finger and thumb here and I'm using my right index finger and thumb to take both of these tips and I'm wrapping it around that bottom string, pulling those two tips through the loop. The loop. Notice I haven't pulled the whole strings out there. I don't wanna tighten that nylon. But now that I've gotten those through and I'm gonna make that knot, I just use my left finger. I make sure that the, the tension of both of those strings is correct. I want that not to be, I don't, I'm not trying to make it be right up against the plastic. I'm going to have it be a little bit, just the tiniest little bit of a gap between where this knot is and the plastic itself. Then when I get, then once I get to the knot where I want it, I'm using my left index finger and thumb to hold onto the knot and my right, my right hand to try and pull outwards against my fingers so that I'm making that knot a little tighter. And just because this is this knot comes undone so often, I see on so many kid sticks, I'm gonna wrap it around and I'm gonna do that same knot again. So there's two, you're wrapping it around twice. This just helps to make sure that that knot, those two knots won't come undone. It's the same thing twice. I run my hand through the back of the pocket. It still feels like a nice gradual progression out. Now, I wanna make sure for my shooting laces that the tension, there's no one part of this, again, I don't want to tighten these very much, but I also want to make sure that aesthetically they look, you know, correct. So if there's one part that's looking out like that, that's sticking out a little bit, I want to make sure, I'm just going to basically, I'm using my thumb and my forefinger on my right hand, and I'm just pulling a little bit just to make sure I'm not, I'm, notice I've got my left hand is in the pocket pressing up against the mesh. Okay, so there's tension pushing out against the mesh in the same way that the ball would. I'm using my right forefinger and thumb to just pull just a little bit, just a little bit of a pull. See, even right there, I put my fingers on the front part of the pocket where the ball is going to touch it. I press it outwards a little bit this way just to make sure that I'm not tightening anything too tight. Now I'm going to use, I'm going to tie this off. I'm only going to tie one knot. I'm going to do the same kind of knot that I did two of here. I'm only doing one for each of the shooters. Okay, I'm holding, I'm using my fingers. I'm making sure that these two are laying flat against one another. Again, these being perfectly aligned is not necessary. I'm grabbing on with my left index finger and thumb. I'm using my right hand. I'm wrapping over the top, using my left thumb to wrap those two tips underneath. And doing the same thing that I did with the first knot on my nylon here. I'm just kind of pulling nice and gently here just to make sure that I'm getting the knot sitting not quite on the plastic, just a little bit away from it. And then once I get it where it is, I'm using my left index finger and thumb to hold onto the knot to pull against with my right hand. So that knot is nice and snug. It's not sitting right up against the plastic. I can pull, I can pull on part of the shooter here from the front to make sure it does. But if I pull back out like this, there's a little bit, you know, there's a little looseness right there. The knot isn't sitting right up snug against the plastic. Now, the last one, I'm using my left hand to press out against the, the mesh just to make sure that I'm using my right finger and th and thumb to just make sure I'm pulling all the way through. Pull off, I haven't tied anything yet. I'm gonna use my fingers like this just to make sure I just, just going, you know, pull, 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 pull. Biggest thing that I'm doing with that is just making sure that this looks, the, 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 the tension from one side to the other looks right, okay? One or two last using my hand to run uh, my hand out uh, along the pocket to, like the way that the ball would go just to make sure that everything, all the tension of everything still is nice and even. I'm going to finish up tying off this knot the same way I did one above. And there we have it. We've got a nice pocket where the ball can kind of sit 
ball can sit kind of low, but it can also be cradled up like there. And the most important thing, and I can't stress this enough, the most important thing, and the reason why we're doing this is so that we can mass produce, as I hit myself in the eye, we can mass produce this pocket and anybody, uh, a 40 year old dad who's never played lacrosse, who wants to play with his kid, he can pick this up and his six year old pick kid can pick up the exact same stick and they both can use it and it's easy to use. I know this is super long. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate it. Dan appreciates it. Kyle appreciates it. Signature Lacrosse appreciates it. If you have any questions, uh, my Instagram name is at Luke Sidewalker. That is L at L-U-K-E-S-I-D-E-W-A-L-L-K-E-R. Uh, my Twitter is at Sidewall Jedi. Uh, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out. Thank you so much and happy stringing.